Welcome back to Las Vegas. So now for the first of two world title fights that were on the bill tonight. This was for the IBF uh, light middleweight title between the holder, Canada's Matthew Hilton, and the number one contender, Robert Hines, who hails from Philadelphia. Hilton is a tough and tenacious customer, and he was facing a southpaw, and a very clever one at that in Hines, for the first time. Well, Matthew Hilton attacked from the start, and we join it now for round two. Round two. And a pretty explosive uh, opening round two in the side. IBF uh, middleweight championship. I think uh, Hilton's showing just a bit of respect now, Jim. He's not uh, quite as crazy as he was in the first. Yeah, well, in the, the first half minute or so of the first round, he did very little, and then he just uh, stopped into action. So maybe he'll do the same in the second round. But the Hines is trying to push Hilton back to uh, take some of the sting, some of the strength out of his work. And it's not good tactic, but it won't be easy to do. Oh, he's nailed in there. First time he fought a southpaw. But he's done it in the second round, he's tumbled the style all right, Hilton. He really can punch this lad. And Hines is a very creditable fighter, but he is in trouble. And Jane Broadfoot, the uh, very veteran timekeeper for the knockdown, has shown out to Carlos Padilla that he was uh, got up at eight there. He finished the mandatory eight. Can he do it in the second now, Hilton? First Canadian born in Canada to win a world title of 44 years and he really is a colourful character isn't he? In a way Jim is a chopped off Marciano isn't he? He's yeah. going to get the job done here, he's got halfway to go in this round. Well he's certainly not some of the fight out of Hines, Hines is still a little bit unsteady, he doesn't have the mobility he had at the beginning of the round in his legs, so I think he's still feeling the effects of that left hook. Hilton has been concentrating his right hands in the first round, but it's the left hook now that's doing the trouble, and that is the, the best punch for a southpaw. This is a mandatory defence, by the way, with Hilton. He is the number one contender with the RBF Hines. And again, the oohs and ahs and misses there. Not the sort of thing you want from a world champion, really, but uh, the crowd, of, the people who pay to come in like it. Holding and hitting there, the dealer quite rightly has got to go for Hines with that one and uh, take time off and showing out to the timekeeper. No way this can go 12 then. No, no, we're certainly not at this pace anyway and I don't see this going to the full route anyway. Hines, uh, Hines' defence is not quite as tight as it was earlier, he's taking a future. He's really roughed it, really roughing this fellow up there, isn't he? And that, that's when he started to hit and hold just before that. It looked as though he could have finished him at that point, really, and he should have picked his punches that much better. And again, Jim. Yeah, the left hook started the troubles. But, uh, and then I think Hines thought the referee was going to break them up. But uh, Hilton continued punching as he always does. And there it goes. That so out for the third then. And what a start it is. What an explosive start to this fight. You couldn't get much harder punching than this at the 11 stone division. Stone 12 uh, Pines, right on the, the button at 11 stone Hilton. And as Jim Watt was saying at the start, he, he doesn't look as though he had to wait drain at all really. He's a lot of talk about it. He, even the sports book, as they call it here at the Hilton, took his name off the betting board a couple of days ago because they thought he might not make the weight, so you couldn't bet on the fight. Well, I tell you, if, he, if he's weight drain, I don't know what he's like if he, if he can fight without having to drain it, Jim. Yeah, well, as I say, there seems to be plenty of flesh on his body. I don't think he's weight-drained at all. And Hines is now finding it very difficult to cope with his pressure. 
he's making a lot of mistakes now, he's pulling his head back from Milton and leaving his chin at the exposed. He's going to have to do what he was doing earlier, trying to push Hilton back. Also, it's helped Hilton that they weigh in 24 hours before the fight now, the IBF rules. He's taken unnecessary stick there though, Hilton. It's never necessary, by the way, but he's, he's not doing much about it. He couldn't have punched himself out, Jim, surely. No, there were too much strength in his punches there. I'm in there, so I'll go for him just to be completely drained. I don't know what he's doing here. Maybe he's just winding up the big one. Not quite a family, this Hilton, all the brothers, uh, and Dad being a pro fighter. And uh, young Jim's an amateur. This uh, whole family, they, they must have gum shields nailed to the front door, I think. seems to be making every punch, uh, trying to make every punch count, Hilton. I, mean, I wonder maybe if he doesn't feel he can he's surviving a hard 12 rounder. Well, those punches are ba bang, landing, bang on Hilton's chin now. And referees him over to pull him back from the ropes like that. Oh, right on, it was right on high on the head, Jim. That was the, He really wondered what hit him there, Hines. He's so mad at himself, he was on top at that point. And it looked as though it hit him in the forehead, didn't it, really? It was a bit high, the punch, but it was good enough to knock him over. It was a tremendous punch. I'm surprised he got up so quickly from it because it was a beauty. That seemed to be what Hilton was winding up. Well, he's running out of time in this round, anyway, uh, Hilton. He nailed Hilton for the second, and here it comes. It, I thought it was a high punch. Amazing, almost the Polex job, that. Well, that says it all. This is all the man is saying, duck and die, get, get below punches. Out for the fifth round, then. And it really is a, a hard punch up, this one, for the light middleweight championship of the world, the IBF version. Last fight in July, Matthew Hooks. Well, of course, Paul Whitaker when you run on the middle fight of four rounds. Well, Hines now obeying his corner now, trying to just duck and dive a little bit anyway, shifting punches. It's, it's a bit showy and we'll see how effective it can be. It's always the trouble, Jim, and it's nice to keep winning 29 on the turn, but you can get a bit slack in defence, and uh, Adrian's doing that at times, isn't he? Yeah, you know, well, Hilton, we normally expect him to be a pressure fighter, but certainly in, in the last two rounds, he hasn't put Hines under any pressure, and the same thing's happening here. Another very lazy round, he seems to be banking just one hit, turning things out of the blue for him. I wonder maybe if he's not as strong as he should be. So there it is, midway through the fifth. Yeah, as you say, he's getting a bit lazy, a bit casual, isn't he? Well, he's certainly not boxing like a world champion. Uh, some of the wild right hands he's throwing are missing by a mile and he's backing off. He hasn't mounted one serious attack in this round. This is not the way Hilton likes to perform. Oh, that was a punch. The crowd from the back of this carpeted arena could see that one coming, but I don't think Hines did. If he did, he didn't get out of the way of it. 
Locked himself on the rope to get draped over like wet laundry if he stays there. Not much left in the round there, as you can see. Oh, he is in trouble now, though. He's bleeding as well. And those red flashes you may catch in the corner there of the bulb, reminding the referee they're coming up to the end of the round. But you can hear the bell. And he's in, and he's risking it there, isn't he, Padilla? He really is in trouble there, Robert Hines. He started to bleed from the, yes, from the nose, as you can see there. It's, uh, well, it's possible it's even broken, Jimmy. He certainly took some stick there. Uh, well, despite a bloody nose, Hines started to come back into the fight, and we rejoin it now in round eight. So coming out for round eight then, and... Uh, his father saying he can't hurt you, Jim. I think he might be kidding him a little bit there. There's, I don't know what he means. That, uh, he's taken his best shots without going over, Hilton. Yeah, and the rest of the advice was good for Hilton. He's going to have to come forward. He's got the allowing he's to push him back. He's going to have to unload some punches. He's waiting far too long. Well, I, I did say at the start that uh, Heinz Bam Bam, as they nicknamed him, has got a a good steady record, a good confident fighter that people haven't been in a hurry to fight over the years. He's the USBA champion. See, Hines has been able to box at his own pace all the way through, and he's very effective at that pace. Oh, he's turning it on again now. He's listened to Dad there, all right. Right above us here. Gives it a big grin, Hilton, as if to say, what are you doing standing up after I've hit you with my best shots? Well, Hilton's using up a lot of steam here, so we'll see how he copes now. Now that he's put out a lot of work, if Hines comes back out, we'll see how Hilton likes this. Yeah, he soaked that up well, Hines, there. He seemed to know that Hilton was tiring as he was throwing punches, but he's showing off a bit now. As if to try and kid Hines, but that won't work. He's tired, Jim. Yeah, Hilton looks very weary. At the end of all the rounds, he looks very leg weary. This is the first time during a round he's looked bad. So though, they weren't just rumours then, were they, before the contest that he did uh, fatten up and had the drag to do this weight. But he really is an absolute bulldog of a fighter, isn't he? Although, in his case, I suppose, Scotch Terry will be more like it, wouldn't it? Yeah, but the scheme seems to have left his punches. His legs are so weary, he's not getting the leverage behind the punches now. This is where Hines should grit his teeth and start pushing Hilton back again. I mean, this really is a war of attrition now. was almost upset that the bell went there. He, he really thought he had a chance of finishing it. Okay, you got a few more down. The eleventh then of this championship fight in the corner, terse corner order, very calm in a way from uh, Hilton's father, Davey. Pinning him on the ropes, don't let him off. We've got six minutes to pull it out of the fire. He knows now he's in trouble, the lad. Can he do it? And he's going to give it a shot. Some fighter, isn't he? Put it up! But now it's, it's Hines who can afford a bit of show off, Jim. He kind of nodded to that. He's just to say, if that's the best you can do, I'm ahead and you know it. 
Well, Hilton has never managed to, to, to sustain this kind of attack in any of the previous rounds. Maybe Behinds are just waiting for him to burn out, and he'll come now drilling back at him. Here he comes now. Now, he really is sagging now, Jim, isn't he? He's totally running out of gas, stamina, certainly not the Tsar. That's the last thing that the champion runs out of, but he, he's struggling now. At no time in the fight has he managed to sustain any pressure or any attack. There's certainly something missing from Hilton tonight. But, uh, I don't think we should take away from Hines' performance. He's been under some tremendous pressure, took a lot of big punches, and he keeps coming back like he's doing now. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's a very competent and a brave performance because he was in so much trouble at the office and uh, certainly looked as though he had a busted nose at one point. Uh, they can't patch that up, but whatever they've done, they've staunched the, the bleeding anyway. And his left eye is closing now, Hilton. It really has become painfully one-sided after that first half minute by the champion and like all good champions and brave ones he, he'd like to go out under his own steam the pride of finishing a fight but he's running out of time he's just got now three minutes and 43 seconds as we get up the countdown clock for the end of the 11th coming up if he can make it now referees don't like to stop it in the last round but it could happen had that little edge on the composure the whole time in fact a big edge really Heinz and he's cut around the right eye at the end of that round Hilton so Eddie Aliano first time he's been called in to patch it out as an expert cut man so the master ceremony is calling. Let's have a hand for the last round. And the crowd virtually on their feet in this carpeted uh, arena, a beautiful arena at the Hilton Convention Centre. Okay, well, they've got that blast of adrenaline cream as well all around Hilton's right eye, Jim. What a way to go out this is for a champion. It's hard, isn't it? Yeah, this has been a hard slog all the way through. A little bump of heads there. I mean, Trace, although it's been a hard fight, it has never any time has it been a dirty fight. Some low punching from Hilton, but uh, most of that unintentional. Yeah, that's his style of fighting. I mean, in America, they're cherished for that kind of style. And Marciano was a hero, and uh, there were one or two of his that went into forbidden areas. Well, Hilton must know he has to go forward looking for the knockout, but he just doesn't have the strength to do it. He's backing off as though... He just wants to go the distance now. He'd need the sort of Hollywood Rocky style finish now to bring this one out, wouldn't he? He's just, in this game, one punch can always wipe out the arrears, we know that, but it doesn't seem as though he can do it because Hines is so on top of his game now isn't he? he's got it made and uh, you can see the championship in his side well it's a brave and perhaps foolishly brave finish by matthew hilton but the last thing he wanted to do would be to go over and that's a signal from hines to say i'm the new champion and it would be a bit tragic now if uh, Hilton in fact was stopped in these dying seconds, but it could happen. Well, all Hilton has left now is his courage, he still has plenty of that, but he had absolutely nothing left. No, he can go out carrying his shield, Jim, but uh, that's all, and I would have thought now that's the end of him in the, the light middleweight division, and he needs a good rest after this gruelling fight. There it is then. And the
Bell would go now to save any knockdown anyway in the last round. And there he is acknowledging the crowd now, standing up in Hilton's corner, rubbing it in a bit there. And Hilton not making any objection to that at all. Here is the official scoring. Bernie Cormier scores it 116 to 110. Patricia Jarman has it 112 to 111. And Tommy Kazmarek scores it 114 to 111 for the winner by unanimous decision. And new junior middleweight champion of the world, Robert Bam Bam Hines! Well, a mystifying performance by Matthew Hilton, but a very courageous win for Robert Hines, the new world champion. We'll take a break, and after that, the explosive highlights of another world title fight between Michael Nunn and Juan Roldan.